guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's do some more amazing autumn themed paper crafting. Stay tuned. Welcome and thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. I am so appreciative that you are choosing to spend a portion of your day with me. And a big thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee, shopped on my website, or you are a participant in my monthly members club. You guys are doing so much to help me keep this channel running and thank you so very much. So today we're going to keep working with chipboard and autumn. But not only that, we're going to pull in some Dollar Tree and we're going to take a Dollar Tree item and totally elevate it to a whole new level. And so here's what we're going to be starting with. We're going to be starting with a plain old Dollar Tree craft brown paper bag. And we are going to take this paper bag and add some chipboard to it. And you're not going to believe what happens next. So here is that same bag dressed up. Isn't this absolutely fabulous? And I'll give you a closer look once we get ready to go over what you're going to need to make it. And you're going to be amazed at how easy it is to take this and turn it into this. So y'all know what time it is? It's time to make it. All right, y'all. So here is a closer look at this fabulous upscaled Dollar Tree gift bag. This is what it started out as. And this is what we're going to do to the one that we're making today. When finished, this bag is going to measure five and a half by eight, and it'll be two and seven eighths of an inch deep. So this is really going to be a nice size bag. I created a nice little topper to go over the handles so that you can actually carry this. And then we are going to stabilize this entire bag using chipboard. So we're going to make it a much more sturdier bag than it started out as. And we're also going to make it so that if you wanted to use this as, let's say a gift box, it is box form and box ready. So here's what we're going to need to make it. I have one of the Dollar Tree gift bags and this bag size again is five and a half by eight by two and seven eighths. So all of the measurements that I'll be giving you is based on this size bag. So this is actually considered like a small to medium size bag at the Dollar Tree. You actually get three of these in a pack. Then I have some three by four cut aparts. I might try to work those in. And this is going to be a chipboard project. And I use a medium weight chipboard. The link for the chipboard that I use is in the description box. But if you don't have a medium weight chipboard, you can double stack or triple stack some cereal boxes or boxes that are made out of the same material as cereal boxes, or you can use old shoe boxes. You can actually use whatever it is you think will work for you on this project, but here are the sizes that you're going to need. So we have one piece that is five and three eighths by two and three quarters. We have two pieces that are two and three quarters by seven and seven eighths. And we have two pieces that are five and three eighths by seven and seven eighths. And then I chose for the outside of the bag, this beautiful autumn themed paper. Now this is just a scrapbook paper. So it's actually a very lightweight paper and very easy to work with. And I got this paper from Hobby Lobby. It is a part of the paper studio collection. And here's what we're going to need. So we need one piece that is five and five eighths by two and seven eighths. We have two pieces that are two and three quarters by seven and seven eighths. We have two pieces that are seven and seven eighths by five and three eighths. Then we have our bag. And again, the bag size that I'm using is five and a half by eight by two and seven eighths. And then I have a piece that I'll be using to make the topper. And this measures 11 and three quarters by nine. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just cover the front and back of this. I have added double stick tape to the back and I'm taking one of the pieces that measures seven and seven eighths by five and three eighths. And I'm removing that double stick tape. We'll take this piece and we're just going to place it down, trying to get it nice and centered.
Then I'll use my big old spatula to smooth that out, flip it over, and now I'm going to open it so that I can do the same thing on this side. So I am going to peel away my tape backer from this seven and seven eighths by five and three eighths inch piece. We're going to take this piece and just like with that first piece, we're going to put it down, trying to get it nice and centered. It might not be perfect, but we can get it close enough. So I'm just putting that down on that piece and we'll get that smoothed out. And so now I'm just gonna open it so that we can go ahead and place the chipboard pieces on the inside because it'll be very hard to place those side pieces with that fold. So we're going to take our chipboard pieces and I have already added double stick tape to the back of mine. And I'm going to put those in before I stick them down just to test my fit to make sure that it's right. So I'm going to put all four pieces inside of my bag. And now I know that all of my pieces are going to fit. You can cover the chipboard if you like, but since the bag is already a natural color on the inside and the chipboard matches that, I decided just to leave it as is. So I am going to go ahead and peel away the tape backers. And we're going to go ahead and slide our pieces in. So I'm going to take this piece and slide it all the way to the bottom and then I can lay it down. I'll rotate it to the opposite side. I'm going to remove that tape. We're going to take this piece and we're going to put it inside of the bag and I'm going to slide it all the way to the end first before I lay it down. And now I can take out the long pieces remove the tape backers we'll take this piece that measures five and three eighths by seven and seven eighths i'm going to put it in like this with some space and then i'll get it all the way to the bottom then i can lay it down and put it into place make sure i get that top nice and stuck now I'll flip this over. I'll take this piece out. I'm going to remove it, do the same thing that I did on the other side. So I'm going to take it, put it in with some space, just like that. Make sure I'm hitting the bottom. Then I can lay it down and press it flat. And then we're going to take this piece that measures five and three eighths by two and three quarters. And I'm going to do a test fit just to make sure that it's going to fit because that will be the bottom. And it actually fits so well that it's nice and snug in there, so I'm not even going to remove it. But you want to make sure that your bottom piece is going to sit so that it's flat against the bottom. And I used a piece that was five and three eighths by two and three quarters. So now we have a chipboard box. And they actually sell boxes like this in the store, but y'all know my philosophy. Don't buy it if you can make it. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to put it down right here. Now make sure you do a test fit to see if anything is going to be hanging over. I can see that a little bit of mine might be hanging over. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to take off a sliver. And for me, a sliver is going to be about 1 16th of an inch. So I'm gonna trim that away and I'll put it down again. And now I have a really nice fit. So I'll peel away the tape backer. And I'm going to make sure that when I put it down, I'm trying to match how I have the top placed. So I'll take this piece, put it down, trying to match that top. and then I can lay it down like that. We'll do the same thing on this side. So we're going to take this piece, and this piece looks like it's going to be a fit, 
And you guys might be wondering, well, why did it fit on one side and not the other? Because these bags are not perfectly straight or aligned. So that's why you need to do your test fit to make sure that whatever it is you're going to do is going to fit. So now I can take this piece, I'm lining it up with that piece, put it down. I'm gonna use my big old spatula to make sure that I have all of these nice and stuck. And now we have a very beautiful, beautiful bag. We could stop here, but we're not. We're going to make a topper for this and you're going to see how easy it is to make this topper and to cut out the opening so that your handle fits through the topper. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard and my medium weight cardstock. And this cardstock measures 11 and 3 quarters by 9. I am going to score at 1 and at 3 on all four sides. So that's 1 and 3. 1 and 3. And then we are going to fold and burnish all of those scores. And if you happen to hear a bell ringing, that is my puppy Loki. She is spending time with me this week and she just decided she would go on a little walkabout. And then once we have all of our scores folded and burnished, we are going to remove three corner pieces. So we'll remove this piece, this piece, and this piece. So we'll do this on all four sides. I'm going to take my finger blade, go up to that second score mark, and cut straight down. And then I'll cut in at an angle here, and I'll angle here to remove these two pieces. and then I'll cut there to remove that piece. We'll do this on all four sides. So I'll go up to the second score mark here, drag straight down. I can go ahead and just angle in here, angle here, remove these two pieces and reduce this in size. Same thing over here. You actually might hear Loki bark in the background. She hears noises outside and she is highly protective. And so I'm going to go ahead and just angle a little bit on the outer piece of the two longer panels. So just on that end. And that'll just make it easier for me to fold over without the corners hitting. And so now your project piece for the topper should look like this, but we need to cut some holes so that we can place the handles through them. The easiest way to do it is to take your ruler and figure out where the handle placement actually is. So my first handle falls here at one and three quarters and the second one falls right at four and a quarter. And I'm going to fold in those sides. So I'm going to take my ruler, place it down, and I'm going to make a mark at one and three quarters and at four and a quarter. I'll flip it over on this side and I'm going to do the same thing. So make your mark at one and three quarters and four and a quarter. And because these bags might be different, please make sure that you measure so that you can make sure that you are getting your opening position in the right spot. So I do have mine in the right spot so I'm going to take my ruler, place it slightly in front of the line, and then I'm going to make a cut. Now, when I make my cut, 
I am going to go slightly beyond where I made my mark. And then I'll make a cut on the opposite side. So I'll just give myself enough room and I have about an eighth of an inch opening here and I'm just going to make another cut. And when I make that cut, I'm going out a little bit farther than I did on the first cut. And the reason for that is because I want to be able to just angle these a little bit. I think that just looks better. So now I have an opening that looks like that. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Place my ruler down. And now I'll make my second cut. I'm going to make that cut just a little bit larger than the first one. angle to finish off that opening and so now you can see that I have my openings they aren't exact but they're really good enough so I am going to flip this over so I'm going to take this piece put it down and then I'll trace out that opening and you might be wondering why I didn't put it down first and trace out because I did try that and for some reason going through the two layers it came out looking real jagged so I'm going to see if trying it this way makes it any better. So I'm going to put down this piece and now I'll just go back in with my finger blade and trim out. And I do think that doing it this way actually is giving me a cleaner look. So let's just clean that up. And so now that we have it nice and clean, this is what we have. We're going to take our glue and we're going to put it together. So I'll take my glue and I'm going to add some glue to these tabs. I'll bring up this piece, get that stuck, bring up this piece, get that stuck. I'm going to use my bone folder to go in and make that stick permanent. Then I'll do the same thing on this side. We're going to place our glue right here and our glue right here. Bring it up and get it stuck. Bring this piece up, get it stuck. And now we can take these pieces, fold them backwards, add some glue, and then we'll fold them in. So when I fold them in, I'll use my little bone folder to go in and get that stuck. And so now we have our topper. We can take our bag, take the topper handle, and feed it through and just like that you have a beautiful topper for a beautiful beautiful bag all right y'all so now we're going to do just some very light decorating I have this beautiful burlap flower and some crinkled ribbon I am just going to take my hot glue gun and just add some glue right there 
Then I'm going to take my crinkled ribbon and we're going to create just a little bit of ribbon mess pretty much, but it's not going to look like a mess once we actually place down that flower. So we have our ribbon there. We're going to take that flower and put that flower right there. So we're going to end up with a pretty nice look up top. I am going to take some glue, put it on the back of that sweet little flower, trim away some of this. And isn't that so stinking cute and super easy to make? So the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cut apart for my pocket. I'll bring my scoreboard back in and I am going to score at one quarter of an inch on the sides and then I'll score at half an inch on the bottom. How you score your cut apart if you choose to use one is completely up to you. So then I'm going to fold and burnish my scores. And then I'll use my finger blade just to notch out these end pieces. And then I'm just going to fold this up like this and that's how we'll create that pocket. So I'll need my glue again. So I'm going to take my glue, place some glue right there, bring that up. And then I can take some glue, place some glue here on the sides and here along the bottom. And now I can take this really cute little pocket that we made using a cut apart and we can place that down right there. And it just blends right in. So now we're able to take a couple of fun little tags. This one says giving thanks. The first one said blessings. And we can tuck those in that pocket. And then here at the bottom, I think I'm going to add just a couple of my little burlap flowers. And these flowers are from Little Birdie. I got mine from Tuesday morning, back in the day when Tuesday morning had a lot of great deals on their craft items. These flowers that I have here are probably about two or three years old in my stash. So we're going to take it and just place it right there. So I'm going to add some hot glue to this one, some hot glue to this one, and we're going to stick those right there. And now we have a second absolutely beautiful bag. We can use it as a bag, we can use it as a box, we can keep it, gift it, or sell it. But it is absolutely gorgeous and it's hard to believe that this used to be this. All you need is some chipboard, nice paper, and embellishments of choice, and this is what you're able to make. So when you're in a hurry and you don't feel like making a bag, don't make the bag, just dress the bag and turn it into this. So I have raised my camera so that you can see both of these autumn beauties. They are absolutely adorable. Loving the autumn theme paper, but I love the ease of taking a Dollar Tree bag and dressing it up and making it into what we need for it to be. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this fun, quick and easy way to dress a plain brown paper bag. If you have, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.